Hey there guys, welcome to Anthony Reviews, where Anthony reviews. G.I. Joe has truly evolved over the years, whether it be looking back at the original 12-inch action figures from the 60s, or the 3 and 3 quarter inch figures starting in the 80s, or even the 6-inch scale figures of Classified that we see today. G.I. Joe has evolved and changed over many, many decades at this point. But we all have our starting points, you know, we all have our entries into the line. And so my entry is a very special one. Coming out of the late 2000s with movies like Transformers and G.I. Joe, my interest in 80s nostalgia has never been higher. And luckily for me, G.I. Joe was present on store shelves with G.I. Joe The Pursuit of Cobra, the toy line following the Rise of Cobra movie with a whole new line of action figures that seem kind of inspired by the movie, but aren't exactly. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be going into the entire history of G.I. Joe Pursuit of Cobra for Yojo June. And to really dig into this history, I went ahead and got in contact with the design lead at that time, John Warden from Hasbro. So I want to thank him in advance for all the quotes that you'll be seeing in this video directly from him. And one final shout out I'd like to give is to GeneralJoe'sReborn.com for the usage of most of the photos you'll be seeing in this video. This video is brought to you in part by Super 7. If you're a fan of things from the 80s, 90s, or even today, why not check out Super 7? They've got action figures, apparel, and so much more for your collecting needs. Click the link down in the description below to check out Super7.com today. So in Toy Fair 2010, we get our first look at a new line of G.I. Joe figures. Now obviously, in 2009, we had gotten the release of Rise of Cobra, right? The G.I. Joe movie, the first live-action blockbuster film in the G.I. Joe franchise. So you would assume following that, we would have some sort of continuation of that line. Well, things get a little bit messy. Coming out of the Rise of Cobra film, we were initially looking for ways to continue with the universe that was created for the movie. We wanted to pick up where the film left off. In this process, we worked with artists on the outside to create some very interesting new modern military gear in the context of G.I. Joe. So it really did seem like that we were going to get a continuation of the G.I. Joe brand in a toy line that would extend the movie universe. Now, if you're a Transformers fan, you might be familiar with something like Hunt for the Decepticons, right? A toy line that existed between film number two and number three to kind of fill in the gaps and provide a toy line to exist while the movies were working on, well, the movies. However, that seemed to change, especially when people started going to go into Toy Fair and realized that none of these figures appeared to be based on the movie whatsoever. They kind of looked movie-esque, but overall, it was their own thing. When the direction changed and the focus was taken off the feature film, we had a bunch of figures already tooled up with the likenesses of the film actors. We pivoted quickly to use the bodies and themes we created, but the packaging branding had to be totally redone. Without the Rise of Cobra film to give a sense of universe to G.I. Joe, we got together as a team and envisioned a global Cobra threat. The special mission theme was then sharpened and focused to the four areas that G.I. Joe had to pursue Cobra's advances, these being desert, urban, arctic and jungle. Fast forwarding to San Diego Comic Con of 2010, we get to see this sort of environmental approach in action. We see these booths with the sort of jungle and desert and street venues, and it really does a good job of presenting this global threat that they're talking about. You know, this idea of Cobra all over the world and G.I. Joe has to stop them. And it presents new ways to play as well. So if you want to imagine a kind of snow mission with certain snow characters, you can. You want to bring it to the desert. Like I said, seeing this in person at a convention can really make you sort of go crazy with ideas on how you can set up all these sort of modern but still somewhat sci-fi G.I. Joe characters. And how did fans sort of react to this information? Well, this is what John had to say. What happened next was really fascinating. The fans, and new kid fans of G.I. Joe, loved the new modern era direction, and the multiple environment approach really clicked. We continued to delve deeper into the fantasy world where G.I. Joe and Cobra live, a unique bridge between fantasy, military, and realism. So after months of looking at figures and vehicles at conventions, these figures finally start to pop up around late summer, early fall of 202010. So Wave 1 consisted of 8 figures in total, that being the Alley Viper, Cobra Commander, Duke, Beachhead, Firefly, Snake Eyes, Snow Job, and Storm Shadow. And of course, as mentioned before, each of these figures features their own environmental area. So one will be designed to look like the jungle, one will look like it's from the city, and we'll go into those each as we look at these figures, with the one exception being Cobra Commander. 
We'll go ahead and start by talking about Cobra Commander first, just because this figure looks and feels very different, doesn't he? Well, that's because this figure was supposed to be a mail away at first, and then later became a chase for this line. Once again, this is more proof that this line was clearly meant to be for the movies, right? Like, this is so obviously the movie Cobra Commander, just with a red chest piece and a silver face, and honestly, it does work for me. Now, I might have a little bit of a bias, just because this was the first figure I ever picked up from this line, but, I mean, it is an improvement over the movie look in a really unique and fun way, like, it does have that Cobra Commander feel. It is still a weird, kind of, like, deformed skull face, but, honestly, I don't really have any major problems with it. In terms of accessories, this figure probably does come with the least amount compared to any other G.I. Joe figures. G.I. Joes are pretty well known for coming with a lot of accessories, even to this day in the 6-inch lines, but for here, you know, he's got a staff with a sort of flag on it. It's not like a cloth flag, it is just plastic. He also comes with a couple weapons, but it's Cobra Commander. You know, he's commanding the troops. You know, he's the one sort of yelling from the back, not sort of taking action in the front. So the fact that he doesn't come with a whole lot, isn't too much of a bummer, and the fact that we got this figure at all, considering it was supposed to be a mail away and then it became a chase, and I remember at the time people saying like, oh this figure is going to be rare, and it's not rare, but I do think that it is a cool version of Cobra Commander. Another one of my personal favorites is the Alley Viper, meant to sort of fit into that City Strike motif. This one comes in a red and black and gray color scheme, which we then saw later replicated in the G.I. Joe Classified line. I really like this guy. I love that he comes with multiple helmet choices. I love his riot shield. Like, this guy feels like he comes with a huge amount of accessories, and that's because he does. He does come with a huge amount of accessories. I like the sort of levels in which you can play with this guy, where if you want him to have that sort of classic Alley Viper mask, you know, with the fang helmet, sort of blast shield, you can have that on it, or you can have it with a more regular helmet or even a gas mask, like, you do get a lot of variety with this guy. It's not just sort of the classic Viper, you have to have it as an alley Viper, how you imagine it from the original line, like, no, you do get some changes here and there that make it feel like a new figure, where if you want to have the sort of red helmet be the commander of the group or a sergeant or whatever, and the other helmet be a bit more regular, like, you can introduce some variety and a lot of play value with this figure alone. And then we have Jungle Assault Duke here feeling all camoed out and very, uh, sort of Predator-esque, if you will. You can tell by the sort of chest piece that it does feel very movie. Like, this was probably supposed to have a Channing Tatum head on there. But, for now, he still feels appropriate. Uh, with the bandana, he's kind of given off a mixture of both solid and naked snake with the camo and everything. Like, that, that's kind of a, kind of a cool vibe to him, but... He does feel very survival. He has this sort of big vest and like a big backpack with weapon storage in it. Like, this guy feels prepared. He's making his way through the jungle. He's a tough guy, you know, he's he's got his arms exposed, you know, he's got those guns out in both meetings of the phrase. Like, this guy is fully prepared. He looks fully badass. And, you know, it's not a standard Duke. You know, it's not the sort of khaki Duke that you may think of, but it's a Duke ready for battle. And I really like that about him. Going back to the city motif, and we do have Beachhead here, and obviously for Beachhead, you kind of picture in your head a very green character, right? Like, that's just what Beachhead looks like. So to have this very gray, very muted Beachhead, it is a very different take, and I guess that's something that you can sort of notice with all the figures in this first wave, is that they aren't the classic versions, you know? You're not just going to get one-to-one -one recreations of the sort of a real American hero guys. Like, no, these are meant to be updated, and they're supposed to fit into the world that they've created with this sort of environmental approach. So this is City Beachhead, right? Like, he's going to be in an urban environment. He's not going to be green, he's going to be gray, you know? I like this sort of change with the brown pants. I think that still works, but he's fully loaded out. I like the bulkiness that the vest gives. A lot of these vests are removable, so if you want more of a slender look, you can achieve that with a lot of the figures, including this one, but I do like the sort of tactical look that a lot of these figures get with vests. You know, they feel like they're prepared. They come with so many weapons and so many little details and things that it feels like it's like all-out war for these guys, that they're prepared for anything. And with a G.I. Joe, you know, being prepared for everything is a cool vibe to bring. So while this isn't like a classic beachhead, I do think it is a cool sort of almost night force, right? But sort of a, a city strike beachhead. Sticking with the City Strike motif, we're going to look at Firefly here. And for Firefly, you know, this guy does look very, very different from his classic look, especially compared to Beachhead, where very similar sort of like face mask kind of gimmick. But here, this guy is totally teched out. He's got all these little details. He has like a full-on mask on, and he comes with an even bigger mask, which I guess kind of evokes a Firefly. It's kind of insect looking. It's a little Predator looking, which I guess Predator is kind of the big inspiration for this line, honestly, but we'll get more into Predator later on. 
one. But for Firefly here, he does come with quite a bit. I like the bulky vest, once again. With all these other figures, the bulky vest looks good, and with the helmet here, it does kind of give an opportunity for an army builder aspect. Like, if you want Firefly to have his own, like, elite team, just slap these helmets on there and, well, there you go. You've got your sort of new army builder for the line, which, I mean, that's kind of unique, right? It's not often that Firefly could be used in that way, and it's a unique design. It's gray. Yeah, it's kind of just a sort of one-note color scheme on it, but it's Firefly. That's kind of what you expect. He still comes with a bunch of stuff that you can have him be this explosives expert with these giant mines and everything. Like, it's a very unique take on him. I like the way that the backpack works. Like, it is a legit backpack with this strap that goes over and you can fit stuff inside. So, I do like this Firefly a lot and it's part of the reason I like the classified Cobra Island one so much because it evokes similar sort of armored up feelings for me. And of course, with it being Wave 1, we are finally here at Snake Eyes with a Timber figure as well. So, you don't just get Snake Eyes, you do get his animal companion, and, you know, it's a bit of a different look for Snake Eyes. This is a desert battle Snake Eyes, so he's pretty bulky. You would think in the desert you maybe want to go a bit lighter, but this Snake Eyes is wearing a very thick jacket, but he still has the sort of, like, ninja visor. So, he feels commando, but at the same time, he still has that sort of ninja feel to him. It's a unique look for sure. It is a bit unfortunate where some of these figures you can remove the sort of vest to kind of give it sort of a leaner look. This one, because of the sleeves and everything, you can't can't really achieve that, but, you know, it still looks good. I do like the feature of the sort of raisable sort of visor there, so you can see his eyes. Not something that we get on every Snake Eyes figure, so the fact that this is here, it is sort of a unique feeling to that figure there. I do like it. But overall, he comes with what you'd assume. You know, he comes with the sort of dual Uzis there, he comes with a katana blade, and Timber, having any Snake Eyes with Timber, I think is a really good addition. I mean, honestly, with the jacket and the wolf, like, he feels a bit more like an Arctic Snake Eyes, but that's just not what this is. It's it's a desert snake eyes. So I don't know, maybe if the theming got a little lost, maybe they had a quota to meet. Not entirely sure, but either way, it is a cool snake eyes figure, even if it has a bit of an identity crisis. Now, of course, going to the real Arctic hero, we have Snow Job. And I mean, if you like accessories, this is the guy for you. He comes with so many unique things. You know, with G.I. Joe, you sort of expect things like, you know, machine guns or swords or knives or explosives or whatever. But like, this guy is just full on ready for a day in the mountains, a week in the mountains, whatever it may be. With his climbing gear and his sort of like tarp that he has, like with the skis and everything, this guy is just fully decked out. And uh, once again, you do kind of see the sort of like armored up torso piece underneath the vest. So that does sort of evoke the sort of movie vibes but you're not going to be taking off this big bulky jacket. Like, that's just what Snow Job looks like. The green camo is a nice touch. It sort of modernizes them just a bit, but ultimately, the accessories make this guy so special that he's a must-have in the collection. Even if you're not a Snow Job fan, which I don't know why you're not, but hey, if you're not a Snow Job fan, you should just appreciate it for just how much he comes with and how unique of a figure he really is. And to put a guy like this in Wave 1, I think is honestly a really cool move. Makes him a fan favorite, in my opinion. And the last figure for Wave 1 is, of course, Desert Storm Shadow. Now, this is more what I think of for the desert, right? Like, he has sort of wrappings on him, but he's really exposed. You know, he's not letting the heat really get him now that he has this sort of open chest and arms area. For Storm Shadow, it is a pretty unique look. You know, we think of Storm Shadow in a classic look with, like, a white gi, you know, maybe the sort of, like, urban camo of the sort of version 2. But this guy, I really, really do like him. Like, he feels like he's out of something like Prince of Persia. I don't know. Like, it does does look really cool. The chain that he comes with adds a lot of personality. His top piece that feels very like torn and ragged. Like this guy feels like he's been in the desert for a while. You know, like this is a look that he's had and he's really just making the best of it. He's making the best of his time in the desert. And in terms of accessories, he does come with a huge amount of stuff. Very pointy. You know, he's got these sort of like Wolverine-esque claws and different size swords. Like this guy is fully decked out, fully prepared. If he finds snake eyes, it's not going to end well for him. So in terms of a Wave 1, we do have a nice selection of characters here, a good amount of Joes, a good amount of Cobra, some iconic characters like Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, Cobra Commander. It does feel like you do have a nice variety for a Wave 1 with the promise of even more exciting stuff coming in the future. But figures weren't the only things included in Wave 1, we also got a slew of vehicles as well as mechs. So in terms of vehicles, we have two different classes. We have Alpha Class and we have Bravo Class. Both came with two vehicles on their own. And then, of course, we'll get into the mechs afterwards. So the two Alpha Class vehicles were the Doom Cycle with Storm Rider and Ghost Hawk with Tomahawk. 
So while the main assortment of figures didn't feature any Dreadnoughts, we do get a glimpse into that world with the Doom Cycle here, as well as Storm Rider. You know, you think Dreadnoughts, you think of sort of like bikers, you think of sort of delinquents, you think of these like sort of Mad Max looking guys, and I mean, we do get that here. It's a pretty decent sort of chopper looking vehicle, we've got guns mounted on the front, and while Storm Rider is a bit more of a simple character, I mean, he gets the job done. I do like the sort of white hair, and I like the bandana around him, but you do have to admit that a guy in a black shirt and jeans isn't super exciting, but it does fill that sort of biker motif that they're clearly going for in this figure. The other vehicle included was the Ghost Hawk with Tomahawk, so if you're gonna have somebody from Cobra, it makes sense to have somebody from G.I. Joe, obviously with the Dreadnought and the Cycle, you know, going for sort of a ground attack, while this one is going for more of an air motif, which is cool. You know, it's, it's a nice idea to have G.I. Joe vehicles where this one is for the air. You know, we have a nice sort of smaller flying vehicle, nothing too crazy, you know, nothing big like a jet, but it is still something where you can kind of have a figure fly around and, you know, it provides a different level of playability when you've got something up there. Figure itself is pretty simple. We've got a guy here with a sort of mustache and beard combo and a green sort of flight suit and a nice vest and helmet. So what you would think of as a pilot for something like this, that's what comes with it. Nothing too crazy with the accessories or anything, but for the most part, you're going to have him in there flying the thing. So it makes more sense to just kind of keep him simple and straightforward. And in the Bravo class of vehicles, we did get technically two, but it's really just more so one, so I'll talk about it at the same time. This is the Cobra Hiss Tank. Now, the Hiss Tank was sort of a big driving force for this line. This is the idea of, like, a very big threat that G.I. Joe has to take care of, this new type of tank that Cobra has developed. And we got it in two different colors. We had this sort of, like, brown and silver look, as well as an all-black look, if you're wanting a more classic Hiss Tank. So in terms of the his tank, it does sort of evoke those sort of original feelings, especially with the shape of the treads and everything, but this is a completely new his tank. You know, it is meant to look like that original one, but ultimately this is a new thing in its shape, in its abilities, it is a brand new vehicle for a modern age. While the sort of brown look doesn't really appeal to me, I do think that the black one does, just because I do like that color of the original His Tank, and I think it works for this one. His Tanks have always been a very unique sci-fi item in the Cobra ranks, and I do feel like this is a neat update for modern times. I like its sort of ability to sort of lunge forward, it sort of lifts up like a Cobra, if you will, and I think that's kind of a neat feature, and ultimately, it's a neat modern version of it. It does come with a driver, of course, which is appreciated, and this one feels a bit more classic. You know, nothing about this feels very updated or modern, which is fine. I think that the Kiss Tank driver is a pretty cool look, and to mess with that too much might be pushing it, so the driver itself does look nice. It's sort of a muted colors Hiss Tank driver, and I mean, it's a tank, so you're gonna need a driver to go with it. And the last thing that was included in the Wave 1 assortments were the mech suits. So we've got one for Cobra and one for Joe. And obviously mech suits aren't a totally a foreign concept for the world of G.I. Joe, but they are a bit unique. They are a bit different and very modern feeling. So for the Joes, we have a pretty basic mech suit here. It's the G.I. Joe Steel Marauder with kickstarts. Sort of what you think of in terms of a sort of late 2000s mech suit. You've got a cockpit to sit in, and then of course you have these two style arms here. One is a bit more grabby, one's a bit shooty, and this sort of army green color scheme. Once again, mech suits aren't completely random in the world of G.I. Joe, and G.I. Joe has always had a flair of sci-fi in it, so to have this sort of like mech suit to sort of fight guys and just kind of be a different kind of enemy on the battlefield does make sense, and I think it fits in with the sort of modern techie world of G.I. Joe. Kickstart himself is a pretty decent figure, just really being in greens and browns, and I mean, you just need a guy to shove into the mech suit. You're not going to use a bigger name from the G.I. Joe world. You're going to kind of just take whatever name you can so that you can put him in a mech suit, because the mech suit is the most important part, not the figure. And then for the Cobra side of things, we have the Cobra Deviant with the Cyber Viper, and of course this one is going to have a bit more of a Cobra color scheme. We've got these sort of reds and grays and silvers in there, and I mean, I do think that this is a good sort of opponent for the G.I. Joe one. Is it similar? Oh yeah, 100%. I mean, these guys look like they are made in the same factory, just with different paint colors, and you know, maybe that's the case, but for this one, we have sort of a giant mace, and then a sort of grapple item that it can fire at the Joe enemy. 
And then the figure that this one comes with is a pretty cool looking Cyber Viper in that sort of red and black color scheme to go along with the mech. I do think that this one looks cool. The helmet is actually a bit Poe Dameron-esque, which is funny because it's years before that character existed, but I do like him. So seeing these, I can't really explain it, but they do feel very of the time for the late 2000s and early 2010s, so it's not exactly a mystery why these haven't come back in any shape or form, but I wouldn't be opposed to them returning. I think they're pretty fun. So already with just one wave, we do have a nice variety of items here. We've got a bunch of figures, a lot of different vehicles, and really G.I. Joe and Cobra are both filling out very nicely. So with wave two, let's kind of see what we're dealing with here. So the figures included in this wave are Destro, Dusty, Jungle Viper, Rakondo, Snake Eyes, and Zartan. So Destro here is going for the Arctic Threat angle of things, and you can really see that just with the amount of snow that this guy is covered in. Now, this was an interesting choice just to have for your first Destro out of the gate, because once again, if this is just supposed to be a regular Destro, ah, good luck. Like, this is 100% without a doubt Arctic Destro. But then again, that's what we're going for here. We are going for a sort of, like, environmental theme. That's the whole gimmick, so it's hard to be mad at it, and the snow effect is pretty cool. I like the way that it's done on the chest and the shoulders and everything, Thing. like it is a really cool figure in the face here you can really tell that this was supposed to be a movie figure something about just the vibes of it and everything it feels like a last minute change to not make it look so movie especially on virgins that have the eyes showing like to me that's eccleston for sure other than that, he does come with some cool accessories, including things like a big flamethrower and this sort of like smaller, I'm assuming like ice gun. He comes with these ice effects, so if you want to have him either frozen just from being out there or sort of blasting people with some sort of freeze ray, it is a lot of fun to sort of play around with that, and it does give this Arctic Destro the full Arctic treatment. So if you were looking for villains to fight characters like Snowjob, this was a perfect opportunity. Going from cold to hot, we have Dusty in his sort of desert gear, and I mean, of course, if you're going to have any character be in the desert, it's going to be Dusty, and I do like this figure and how much he comes with. Once again, the sort of opportunity for displaying him in different ways is really prominent here. He comes with a sort of alternate head that is fully masked, so if you're wanting something to sort of be like an army builder, if, if Dusty has his own elite force of desert trackers or whatever, you can have that. Or just have a normal helmet on him and, you know, he looks like regular old Dusty. Elements like his cloth cape really do make this feel like the sort of next step for Dusty. No longer does he have just the little sort of cloth coming down from his helmet, he has a full-on sort of desert cape and the sort of wrapping around his neck. Like, this guy is going deep, deep into the desert, doing God knows what. So yeah, this Dusty gets points just for being so unique. You know, is it a one-to-one -one for classic Dusty? No, but really none of them have been. This guy just does a really good job of being a cool desert trooper, and I really like him for that. And then we get to one of the original characters from this line, that being the Jungle Viper. Now, this guy is wholly unique and a really, really cool figure that, honestly, I don't know how they end up doing him today. He's got all these sort of, like, fixtures on him that sort of make him blend in like a jungle camouflage. And he's got stuff like really big sort of night goggles and everything. Like, this guy is super, super unique. John Warden had been on record for saying that this was his favorite figure from this line, so I felt like I needed to ask him if it's still his favorite figure today. Absolutely. Looking at this design today, almost 15 years after its debut, it's still as fresh and wildly specialized as I had intended back when I was sketching it out and chatting with Dave Proctor. What is especially heartwarming about this character in particular is that looking at it now reminds me of that moment in time. Those long nights eating fast food, sketching out input drawings, sitting on Dave's desk which he wore his optic headset stressing out, trying to make all those elements key together like my design, indelibly etched into my mind. Those were tough and passionate times. We poured our hearts and soul into those figures. We took chances, listened to the fans, and listened to our hearts. It's absolutely incredible what they were able to do with this figure. He stands out so much, and yet feels like he was always meant to be part of the line. Unfortunately though, this figure has yet to ever be done in any other line, making this one that much more special. But like I alluded to before, can you really top this figure? I don't know. Sticking with the jungle motif, we have Rakondo here, and once again, like how Dusty made a lot of sense for the desert, Rakondo does make sense for sort of a jungle motif as this sort of hunter type, right? With items like hatchets and bear traps and this interesting like solar panel system that he's got on his backpack, this guy fits in perfectly with that jungle idea. You know, this guy is sitting in trees just waiting for his perfect moment to strike, and I feel that same way about the jungle viper, and a lot of other characters that we'll be mentioning in the future of this video. 
once again sticking with the jungle idea we have this sort of jungle battle snake eyes which is a bit weird now i certainly don't blame gi joe for making snake eyes they're almost like batman or something of the line you know like snake eyes is extremely popular so you want to have different versions of them for kids to pick up however this one just feels extremely different i don't know i don't know if it's meant for this line in particular but it is a very drastically new take on snake eyes Unlike the last one, which honestly felt a bit more commando than ninja, which came with the sort of ninja head, this one comes with a commando head, but honestly feels way more ninja. He has these hook swords and this sort of like crazy armor going on. I don't know. It feels very snake eyes has to be in the line, so we gotta put him in the line. It's a unique toy, and honestly, I think you can get away with using this as like a different character entirely, but I don't know if it's sort of needed if you're just needing a snake eyes figure. This feels very, very different from the norm, but I guess in a fun way if you're looking for that. And the last figure for this wave is, of course, Zartan, the master of disguise himself. This Zartan is desert-themed, and I do think that they utilize this very, very well. Normally, when you think of Zartan, like I said earlier with the Dreadnoughts, you think of sort of like bikers, that kind of thing. But for Zartan here, he almost feels like he's more reserved. It's almost like this is an older Zartan after years of, uh, being the sort of like leader of vandals he's a bit more smart he's a bit more wise and you really get that with the sort of bird accessory with this sort of like staff that he has i love the sort of shading on the body this almost like sunburned top that he has compared to the sort of lighter chest area this is a very cool zartan it's a very unique zartan and i wish it was a zartan they would sort of revisit now in the classified line like i said the aura of him is just so completely different to drive home that master of disguise feel he does come with a completely alternate head and a a different vest so that if you want him to sort of go out there and you know be this sort of like guy hiding in the ranks of gi joe you can do that or if you wanted to get this and put this figure on someone else or use it somehow you can like it's just a normal head that can be applied to pretty much any figure returning to the world of vehicles we once again have two alpha class and two bravo class the Alpha Class 1s are the Awe Striker with Night Fox and the Ice Cutter with Snow Serpent Officer. The Awe Striker is a G.I. Joe vehicle that we've seen many a times and obviously it's a pretty simple sort of dune buggy four-wheel vehicle. This one being desert themed does feature very very dirty wheels and sort of tan and black color scheme to it. Honestly, if you've seen one Awe Striker, you've kind of seen them all and this is definitely no exception to that rule. Night Fox himself is a pretty straightforward figure. He comes with a sort of all black top with some tan bottoms, and then he does have sort of additional pieces like hats and a sort of scarf to have around his face. As I mentioned earlier, you're not really gonna have named guys be with the vehicles. Anyone can be in vehicles, so you just sort of slap a name onto a guy and throw him in there. And I do apologize if Night Fox is one of your favorite characters, but here, he definitely has background character energy to me. For the Cobra side of things, we have the Ice Cutter with the Snow Serpent Officer. Now, where I found myself a little been there, done that with the Awe Striker and Nighthawk, this one I do feel like is pretty fresh and pretty exciting. Obviously, these aren't entirely new concepts, but snow vehicles and snow characters are so rare that it's fun to have them in the line. This cool ice themed vehicle has a really cool paint job with its black going to white the further you go down its body, and the red highlights on the weapons really do pop in my opinion. The Snow Serpent itself is another case where does it feel like a sort of modern Snow Serpent compared to the original? Eh, yes and no. It does feel very classic, it doesn't feel like it's going for anything too crazy or out there, but the red on a Snow Serpent does look really cool and it makes the most sense to go with a vehicle that is of course snow themed. This time we actually do have two vehicles, two different ones that is, with the Bravo class, that being the Vamp and the Cobra Fury. So the G.I. Joe vehicle here is of course the Vamp with double clutch. Now of course with a Vamp you're going to have a much more meaty type of vehicle than compared to the Awe Striker. You know, if that one just wasn't cutting it for you, this one should do just nicely. So from the box here, it does appear to be sort of jungle themed. But honestly, based on the color scheme and everything, it doesn't really feel like it couldn't fit anywhere else other than, I guess, Arctic. That would probably be the weirdest for this vehicle to be. But it is a nice big vehicle. It's a four-seater. It's got tons of sort of weapons placement and everything. So if you're needing a nice big vehicle for your Joes to maybe even try to take on the Hiss tank from earlier, this might be a viable choice. Like the weapons I mentioned earlier, you can have a figure placed in the back to fire away. And it does come with a wench in the front. So it does have that sort of classic vamp feel to it. The figure double clutch is a bit of a bland one, kind of like all of the vehicle figures. It's just sort of a guy in a one color jumpsuit with a sort of vest on there. He he does have a beard, so that is cool in that regard, but overall, 
It's just a guide to drive the thing, not really anything else. So while the vamp might try to take on the his tank by itself, it'll probably be interrupted by the Cobra Fury that comes with the Alley Viper Officer. This thing looks wild, to be honest. This thing is kind of freaky looking. It's a weird looking vehicle. It's kind of asymmetrical in its design. And I mean, I do like it. For Cobra to have sort of a weird, more out there vehicle in their ranks, it totally makes sense. Like the his tank before it, this one is just an oddball looking thing. And I know it does pull from previous versions and previous toys, but in this sort of modern color scheme, it does give that sort of scary modern sci-fi feel to it. While this might not be my favorite vehicle, I do appreciate the unique uniqueness of its overall design. What I don't like as much is the Alley Viper Officer. Now, while I was a big fan of that first figure that came in the red and black color scheme, this one is a bit boring looking. You know, he's got sort of a drab color to his outfit with a black vest and this weird, almost like chocolatey helmet. Yeah, I'll be honest, that just doesn't, doesn't work for me. I don't like it, which is a shame considering how much I like the normal sort of Alley Vipers in the line. And then at the very tail end of 2010 and going into 2011, we start to see Wave 3 appear in store shelves. Wave 3 has even less figures than Wave 2, that being four figures in total, the Cobra Shock Trooper, Duke, Snake Eyes, and Storm Shadow. So we have yet another army builder to add to the Cobra ranks with the sort of Cobra Shock Trooper. This figure is honestly pretty cool. He's very simple. He's very straightforward, but he still has a unique flavor to him. He is very reminiscent of a regular sort of Cobra Trooper. You know, he's very plain. He just sort of has like a sort of a baggy sort of military cargo outfit, as well as a vest and various helmets and weapons and things. But it's the way that they come all together that really makes this guy feel unique, in my opinion. I like its sort of giant gas mask. I think that makes it feel kind of unique in its own way. And of course, if you're going to have a sort of shock trooper, it makes sense to have this sort of riot shield vibe to it. Like this guy feels very oppressive. He feels very violent. You can easily see a bunch of these guys lined up on a shelf and just feeling like an oppressive force. And you know, for Cobra, that makes sense for these guys. And with the different types of helmets and goggles and masks and everything, you can make a bunch of them feel unique in their own way without it all feeling like the same guy or sort of a clone vibe. But for an army builder, it comes a lot of weapons he does have a very intimidating feel to him this is a good figure for sure next figure we have is the second duke of the line that is the desert battle duke now this one feels a lot more normal you know he still feels modern of course with this sort of vest that he's got this sort of like chest pieced armor that he has going on here but the hair the colors it does feel like an updated version of a classic duke character without any kind of particular themes or environment stuff going on here the main thing that this Duke comes with is this giant sort of backpack missile launcher thing. Um, I mean, it's unique for sure. Uh, I really don't think of Duke as having this kind of like big wild weapon, but if you already have the first Duke and you just need this Duke, he is a pretty standard Duke, despite the fact that he comes with this giant backpack. And I mean, as a toy, it does look cool. The weathering on it's nice, like it's nicely detailed and everything, but you know, especially if we're trying to just get a normal GI Joe display in there, this isn't a bad choice. And then in wave three, we have our third Snake Eyes in the line. Once again, driving home this idea that Snake Eyes is sort of that character that they want to have as many versions as possible because they're aware of Snake Eyes' popularity. This one is the Desert Battle Snake Eyes, which does feel a bit strange considering that wave one also had a Desert Snake Eyes, but looking at the packaging for both, it does confirm that this is meant for the Desert Battle. So maybe the first one was meant for the Arctic? Um... I'm not entirely sure. You know what? I should have asked John Warden about that. Maybe I will at a later time. This Snake Eyes, however, does kind of feel like it's going for an ultimate sort of Snake Eyes feel. It is commando looking, you know, with the sort of like full on sweater vibe to it and the amount of weapons and the head. But in all fairness, it does come with two heads. So if you want to have them with the ninja head or the commando head, you do have those options. Having this be the third Snake Eyes in a row does kind of feel like we're getting a lot of him, but once again, this is a very popular character, and at least they are different versions. If this was the same one with slightly different alterations, it would be more annoying, I feel, but this one is at least a difference enough that hopefully fans would be interested in it. And the last figure for this wave was the Arctic Threat Storm Shadow. This one going for much, much more of a ninja look compared to his desert look, feeling very almost like Ninja Gaiden to him with the sort of head piece and everything. It's honestly pretty cool. A Storm Shadow is a character that's been in a lot of toy lines, you know, he's been done a lot of times. So to have some different versions here and there, 
isn't too crazy. This is only our second one, so it doesn't feel too out of place yet. Although I will say he is different enough that I wouldn't blame you if you tried to play it off as this being a different character. You know, with the sort of like chest armor piece and just the kind of color scheme in general, like he has the Arashikage logo on him, but he could always be a different kind of ninja, right? Either way, I do think that this one is very different enough compared to the last one where if you want a completely new type of ninja storm shadow, this is a cool addition. So after these three waves, the Pursuit of Cobra line itself would only go on to have three more waves after, so we're pretty much already halfway through the line. So before we get into all those other figures, let's take a look at some of the exclusives that Pursuit of Cobra has had right now. So while normally other stores like Target or Walmart do have G.I. Joe exclusives, at this time Toys R Us was the only one to have Pursuit of Cobra specific exclusives at their store. The two figures that we're looking at are Spirit Iron Knife and Quick Kick. So Spirit here is very clearly going for the sort of jungle assault approach. And I sort of mentioned earlier the very Predator vibes for a lot of these jungle characters, and Spirit is that to a T. Like, this almost looks like a figure from that movie as opposed to a general Spirit figure. I mean, even the head, if you want to take it more of a Rambo approach, it does have that vibe as well. I honestly do really like this figure. I think the sort of greens look really nice on him. I love the facial expression. He looks like he's really seen some stuff, which, I mean, if you're in war, that's an appropriate look to have. Accessory-wise, he does come with a good amount, of course, with something like spirits, if you imagine him sort of hunting with the Native American vibe, coming with something like a bow and arrow and a hatchet does make a lot of sense, so I'm glad that he does come with it. And he does come with snakes, which I guess is just mainly for the jungle motif, really, like, that's about it. Overall, though, while it's not the sort of classic, original, real American hero spirit, I do think that it is a cool spirit, and once again, one that I would like to see done in the classified line. Now, the other exclusive to Toys R Us being Quick Kick is kind of the opposite, where this guy just looks like his classic self. Is it a one-to-one? -one? No, but like, this is undeniably Quick Kick, with the head bandana, with the Japanese flag, and the black pants and everything, like, this is that guy. Some cool accessories that he does come with is a sort of like training gi, as well as yellow nunchucks, which feels pretty Bruce Lee inspired, obviously. So while this figure itself does kind of feel like a normal quick kick that you would see in something like the 25th anniversary line, it is cool to see just sort of a straight up figure like this in the Pursuit of Cobra line. It does provide a bit of variety, despite the fact of it feeling not totally in line with everything else. I guess that's why it's an exclusive, right? You can take it or leave it. Going back to the main line of figures, we have three more waves to go, and that is pretty much it. No more vehicles of any size, no more exclusives, we just have these figures before things eventually start to change. So wave four is another wave consisting of four figures, that being Destro, Low Light, Shadow Tracker, and Skydive. So this City Strike Destro honestly feels totally wild when compared to that first Destro. While that one was a bit more of a snow-themed Destro and clearly had that movie inspiration, this one is just all-out, huge, big, badass. This guy comes with this huge-ass minigun and this crazy-looking sort of armor pieces with the shoulder pauldron. Like, wow. Talk about a unique look for Destro. Something that does feel very Destro, though, is the money that is included in this briefcase here. You know, Destro, of course, he's this sort of, like, arms dealer. He's gonna be coming with a lot of money. It makes sense for the character, and to have, like, legitimate, almost, like, printed money to have in this case here is a really cool touch. The fact that it's actually different types of money too, not just US American dollars, is an even cooler touch in my opinion. The head scope for this one does feel completely different. While that other one definitely felt movie inspired, this one feels a bit more of a classic Destro. It's a bit thinner, the eyes with these sort of green dots sunken in looks really sinister. I don't know, this whole package with the colors and the weapons and everything just make this guy feel like enough is enough, you know? He's taking matters into his own hands, and I think that's a really cool approach to Destro. Next one we have is, of course, Low Light with this sort of city motif, and this is another one, while still feeling decently updated, does come off as a bit more of a classic take on the character. You know, he's not in any sort of crazy color schemes. He still has his sort of goggles and the beanie and the, the red bit on the shoulder, so he does look really good. He's a bit bulky. His sort of vest piece that he comes with does kind of bulk him up a bit, but, hey, you know, maybe it's just a cold night in the city where he's at, but he still comes with all of his sniper gear, and he comes with other additional stuff too, like bullets, like a little sort of tray of ammunition there, and the backpack is a nice touch as well, so overall, it does still feel like you get a bunch for this guy, even if he doesn't really feel as Pursuit of Cobra as the previous ones, and feels a bit more of like a classic figure, amped up to be just a bit more modern. 
After that, we return to the jungle for another original character from this line, that being the Jungle Assault Shadow Tracker. Now, if you're a G.I. Joe fan of anywhere from 2010 to now, I'm sure you've seen and heard of the Shadow Tracker. This guy just looks really scary and really badass and pulls the whole sort of predator motif together for their main villain. This character was so iconic that it's already been brought into the classified line of figures. Because of that, I decided to ask John Warden what he thought of the figure, and this is what he had to say. Shadow Tracker was an especially favorite character for me, since as a kid I always wanted Spirit to have a Nemesis Cobra Tracker that made the Hunter become the Hunted. Lenny and my team have continued the legacy of reinvention, while at the same time paying tribute to fans that have embraced new characters along the way. Looking at this figure, it's very easy to see why this figure is such a popular one amongst fans. The color scheme of the green and black and the weapon choice of having the bow and arrow to combat spirits is a really, really cool idea. I love that neon net he has for capturing enemies. Like, this guy is made to withstand the test of time, and I think they've really managed to pull that off. And that's exactly why we ended up seeing him in the classified line in the first place. The next one we have is Skydive, Jungle Assault Skydive that is, and this is a pretty unique figure. Uh, so far a lot of the Joes have been pretty iconic characters, you know, people you'd recognize from the cartoon or the comics or whatever, so Skydive is a bit of a lower tier character, but he makes up for that for having such a unique sort of just get up and everything going on with this is, is pretty cool looking. I mean, yes, it is reuse of a ripcord figure from the movie, but still, it's cool. He has this sort of massive suit, you know, with these giant shoulder pads and a big collar and all of that to sort of help house these giant wings that he has. That plus his sort of like mass that he has with the sort of oxygen tubes going into it, it's a fairly unique design that I'm surprised hasn't been done since. Like, he looks really cool. I think he's a fairly like interesting looking guy with these sort of greens and grays with just a slight bit of reddish orange kind of highlights around here. Yeah, I, I mean, he really stands out amongst other figures, so I really think this is a figure they should try to like do nowadays. I don't know. I I think it's kind of cool. I don't care if it's really tied to a movie figure. Ignore that. Let this guy have it. Why not? It definitely seems that the farther we get into the line, the more they're able to sort of break away from that movie motif. Like, some of the aesthetics are still there. They still have the very armored sort of chest pieces and everything, and it's a bit more techy than sort of fantasy, I would say. However, a lot of the designs are feeling a lot more retro, a lot more classic, just brought up to today's standards, which you'll continue to see more of in the last two waves. So Wave 5 is up to 6 figures, that being Blowtorch, Cobra Commander, Cobra Trooper, General Hawk, Jungle Bat, and the Steel Brigade. So the first figure we have here is Blowtorch, which is supposed to be part of the Jungle Assault sort of vibe, but I'm not really getting that from this figure. From what I can tell, this is a straight up sort of re-release of a previous release Blowtorch, and you can really tell that by how classic it feels. You know, all the colors are there, the outfit is very similar to sort of OG classic Blowtorch, which can be good or bad depending on who you are. I think as a blowtorch, he is fairly neat, like the yellows and reds are there, but I wouldn't say that this is like a must-have figure or anything. Not to mention, with it not having any kind of ties to a jungle assault, despite that what it's saying on the packaging, it just feels like a, a weird choice to have in the line. It feels like a spot filler, as opposed to a truly Pursuit of Cobra type figure, you know what I mean? He does come with the appropriate amount of accessories, such as a blowtorch, as well as a helmet and some weapons, so like, he has enough, he's there, if you just need a blowtorch, he's perfectly fine, but all in all, yeah, it's not exactly a cool exclusive figure for this line, like say Shadow Tracker or the Jungle Viper, it's just a blowtorch figure. Second figure in the wave is, of course, Cobra Commander. Cobra Commander is back for the first time since having his very movie-inspired look in the very first wave, and this one is a City Strike figure, which doesn't really give the vibe of City Strike either. Like, the big jacket that he's wearing kind of gives me more Arctic vibes, you know? Like, he's in the, the, the winter, so he's got, like, a big puffy coat, but, I mean... This one very clearly looks more like Cobra Commander than the previous one. So if you were waiting for a more cartoon or comic book or OG toy Cobra Commander, this one is a bit closer. However, he doesn't feel very regal like I imagine him. And I guess that's why he includes a cape and a sort of like Cobra staff, if you will. So he has elements there. You know, he's not completely like un Cobra esque, but the outfit doesn't really go with like the cape and the scepter and all that. So it kind of feels out of place in my opinion. It just doesn't work in that regard. So it's nice to have the blue colors. It's nice to have that sort of classic helmet, but 
I feel like there's a clash of ideas. Once again, city. I don't really get city from him. Well, eh, why does he have a cave? Yeah, I'm repeating myself at this point. I do like this figure, theoretically. I just don't know if all the pieces in the puzzle fit together. Now, the next figure here, the Cobra Trooper, does feel like a sort of genuine upgrade to the idea of a Cobra Infantry. This figure has all the hallmarks of your classic Cobra Trooper, you know, with like the helmet and the face mask and the colors, but it's all done in a way that feels modern. It feels updated, which, you know, is appreciated. It's nice to have a sort of modern version of those classic G.I. Joe characters without feeling like it goes too far from what you want or just a bit too classic. This is like the perfect middle ground of an anniversary figure and like a whole new movie style figure. Like this is what these figures should look like in my opinion. He comes with a pretty decent amount of stuff with multiple weapons and a harness and like barbed wire. Barbed wire is kind of an interesting choice, but hey, you know, sure, whatever. But once again, they've done such a nice job of bringing that classic design into the modern age that any sort of like weird accessory issues isn't really a problem. Like this is a figure that I could see people army building to death just of how simple yet modern it is. And with this one being labeled City Strike, I do believe it, purely because Cobra Troopers can kind of exist anywhere. Like, it doesn't really matter where they're at, they're Cobra Troopers, so if they're in the city, yeah, I believe it. Next figure we have is another one from the Joe ranks, that being General Hawk. And I will say that this figure doesn't really hit the mark for me. I feel like this figure kind of feels a bit more generic than they may have intended. You know, General Hawk is a character that it's General Hawk, like he's the general. And I don't really get that vibe from this guy, you know, and I'm not saying it has to have every single little callback to the original character, but you know, that bomber jacket look of the original character just has a certain appeal to it. With this guy, because of the colors and the, the lack of just iconography, I don't really get General Hawk from this. I get this as just sort of a general kind of like military man, which as a military man, he does look cool like he comes with a lot you know the typical stuff like backpacks and weapons and goggles and helmets and he has all that for him so as a toy that's not lacking but as a character as a guy that you're meant to recognize i don't get that from this figure and you know that's just a bit of a shame the next figure we have here is the Jungle Bat, which is a very interesting choice. Now, this figure, from what I can tell, is a repaint of the 25th anniversary Bat. So, Bats are kind of robots that you can put in any kind of color scheme, right? You can put them in Crimson, Python Patrol, Jungle, as you can see here. And obviously, with the whole idea of the environment thing still going in with the Pursuit of Cobra line, it makes sense to kind of change it up a bit. You know, like, is this a missed opportunity to do a regular bat? Maybe, but if you're buying the other toy line, you're not really missing out. So this is a, a cool opportunity to get a unique style of bat, because bats are just the ultimate army builders, right? Like, they're not my favorite army builder, but like, there's so much you can do with it. And like I just mentioned earlier, with so many options of repaints and redecos and all these things, the idea of a bat in a jungle deco for a jungle themed sort of set, that's not terrible. Like, that's a fun idea. And I do think that the camo works here. I like the color of the silver with the wash on the all the robot bits. Like, that all works for me. So even though this one is strictly limited to the idea of it, like it's in the jungle, that's all you can use it for, that works for me. And it works for this type of toy line. And then in terms of accessories with all of its weapons and everything, I mean, the battle damaged helmet is a reason enough alone to get this figure. Anytime you get any kind of battle damage pieces with bats, I'm there. And the last figure for the wave is the Steel Brigade figure, which is sort of a G.I. Joe army builder. It's an idea of, hey, the Cobra has all these guys, like alley vipers and uh, regular vipers and snow serpents and bats and all that stuff, right? So G.I. Joe, well, what if they just had sort of general troops, you know, not specialists? Like, does everyone need to be a specialist? Uh, you know, maybe, I don't know. But for the Steel Brigade figures, it's a pretty standard looking figure on itself. It's pretty normal. I'm not a huge fan of Steel Brigade. I don't know. Just the general design has never really appealed to me. The helmet is fine. All in all, I don't think it stands out in any major way where you couldn't use this in other ways. So if you wanted an army builder of a man in sort of tactical gear with a sort of weird robot helmet, that is a possibility when it comes to this one. Am I crazy about it? No. Honestly, no. But it is another figure. It does come with a bunch of cool stuff. So so if you just want it for the guns or the gear or to kit bash, this figure is an option, but eh, it's not a must need in my opinion. All right, we're in the final wave, wave six, and that includes six figures, Crazy Legs, Cobra Viper, Croc Master, Iron Grenadier, Rock Viper, and the Temple Guardian Snake Eyes. 
So starting off with Crazy Legs, we do have a pilot here, and I do think he looks really cool. I like the texture of his outfit a lot, like I like the shoulders, the way that those are painted. I like the overall color scheme, the sort of red and tan I think looks really good. Um, I like pilots, you know, maybe that's just a personal bias of mine that I'm talking about right now. But overall, I do think that this is kind of a unique color when it comes to G.I. Joe figures. And I know I haven't been talking about the packaging a whole lot, but like the way he's packaged here is like he's sort of jumping out of a plane. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, once again, this is technically a jungle themed figure. Not really getting a jungle theme, but honestly, not too much of a big deal at this point, especially since we're in the sort of final wave of Pursuit of Cobra. We're just kind of getting G.I. Joe figures out. The fact that they don't line up perfectly with themes, it's not that big of a deal. But overall, I think this figure is a really, really cool one. Next up, yet another army builder for your Cobra ranks, we have the Cobra Viper. This one is another one very similar to the sort of Cobra Trooper, where it's that classic design that you know from the real American hero days, but it's updated for modern times in a fairly satisfying way. Like, I do think that this guy looks really, really good. He fits in with the other characters really nicely. I like the sort of chrome on the faceplate there. Like, this is a good modern interpretation of a classic character that can kind of fit in in different places. And I know, like, Pursuit of Cobra Cobra was sort of a mix match of different ideas, right? Like, you've got the movie aesthetic, you've got the sort of classic aesthetic, but here, like the Cobra Trooper, this is a nice marriage of those types of concepts. So that's why it works so well, in my opinion. He doesn't come with as many accessories as others, but he does come with a giant rocket launcher, so, you know, he makes up for it in that regard, I suppose. Next up in the line is, of course, Croc Master, you know, iconic G.I. Joe character for a lot of fans. Uh, Although he is very specific in his theming, right? Like, this is a one that sort of lucks out, where if you put him in the jungle, it makes sense, because he's Croc Master. He belongs in the jungle. This figure, however, is an interesting one. This is another re-release of the 25th anniversary line, so he pretty much looks like the classic Croc Master. There's not a lot of, like, updates going on here, but he is a weird color, because, like, Croc Master is green, and this guy is, like, almost, like, a yellow? Mm, I'm not really sure what they were thinking here. This is a weird, weird choice, in my opinion. So, yeah, I mean, he comes with a good amount of stuff. He comes with, uh, Shadow Tracker's net, so that's a bit weird. But he comes with a crocodile and a snake, and that makes sense for the character, but this does feel like a downgrade from an already released figure. Like, it's a variant color, which is not something that people really want. Like, I don't know, is there a version of Croc Master that I'm missing that is yellow? Like, is this a reference to something? I'm not entirely sure, but it is an option. So if you missed out on Croc Master for one reason or another, this was available at the time. It wasn't necessarily for me, per se, but it is there. Yeah, not exactly a, a good note for the final wave of this line. Next up in the line does feel like an improvement it is the Iron Grenadier. Obviously, he looks like he's pretty much just reuse of Destro, which makes sense with Destro being the leaders of the Iron Grenadiers. But with that, this guy does look really cool. I think he looks really beefy. I love what they've done with the helmet. I think that's a really cool design. I think the colors are different from the Destro enough to kind of stand out on their own. So they do work in that regard for me. Well, I'm not like an Iron Grenadier diehard or anything. I do think that this figure is cool enough that if you were to army build, it, it would look good on a shelf. Like having these guys sort of stacked up, just a few of them, you know, big, sort of beefy, heavy duty looking guys. I think that would be a pretty cool display, especially with the Destro that we saw earlier in the line. Next up for the Cobra ranks is the Rock Viper. And you know, this is probably the lamest of the Vipers, I'm going to be honest. Uh, just not a whole lot of specialness going on here. Uh, he's got sort of just like a basic sort of mask on his face with a helmet on top of that. The colors aren't super interesting like they're pretty dull looking like they work we've got sort of a tan and sort of a very muted red color scheme going on there so it's fine but like overall i don't think that this comes off as anything special you know like he's a pretty normal looking guy and rock viper is such a, a vague thing to call him right like from what I can tell, this figure is supposed to be an Arctic figure. So it's like, oh, he's like a mountain climber. Okay, sure. But why is he colored for like the desert? Uh, I don't know. Bit of a weird choice. So out of the Vipers, this is my least favorite. And the last figure in the line, of course, is going to be another Snake Eyes. It is the Temple Guardian Snake Eyes. So while we've had a lot of Snake Eyes figures, this one is so different that it's kind of hard to hate on it, you know? Like, it comes with so much different stuff, and it's such a different look. I mean, the alternate heads with, like, the blonde hair exposed, that's so unique. 
We really don't get stuff like that for Snake Eyes very often. You know, like I mentioned earlier, it's like Commando or Ninja. Commando or Ninja. That's the character. So to have this one with, you know, hook swords we've seen him with before, and like some of the weapons are similar, but overall, the entire vibe is so different from the normal versions of this character. It's such a unique feel to him. And I mean, having this guy up against like some of the Storm Shadows we've had previously, I think it's a good matchup. He's so unique in his own right. He's so cool looking that, is it classic Snake Eyes? No, but you're not buying this because you want a classic Snake Eyes. This is a sort of Temple Guardian. You know, it's a whole unique take with its own story that you could make up. And, you know, I'll harp on it one last time, but it says Arctic Threat on the back of the figure, on the back of the box. Mm, I guess on a mountaintop, maybe, you know, just like a mountain sort of uh, ninja temple. Eh, I guess it counts. After that, though, the G.I. Joe brand sort of changed. While Pursuit of Cobra was the mainline G.I. Joe figure at the time, it was obviously meant to be an in-between, right? We mentioned at the very beginning of this video that it was supposed to be sort of a bridge between movies for the G.I. Joe brand. And well, there was a movie coming, that would be G.I. Joe Retaliation, though after sort of uh, setbacks for a 3D conversion and things like that, that movie wouldn't come out until 2013. Around that time, we also had G.I. Joe Renegades, the new cartoon airing on the Hub Network. So alongside these G.I. Joe figures, we had toys inspired by a cartoon in pretty much the same packaging, so they were occupying the same space on toy shelves. So Joe decided to kind of pick and choose their battles, if you will, going from the 25th to the 30th anniversary line, which was catering to the real American hero crowd. And then eventually the line would then turn into retaliation in 2013, and, well, Things only got worse from there. Over the course of its life from 2010 to 2014, the pursuit of Cobra sort of morphed into various entertainment. Renegades and Jojo Retaliation, the 30th anniversary. Our intention was always to continue to develop modern era versions of the characters from the 80s real American hero franchise, all while pushing further and further into new territory. Alongside of Renegades, we debuted the popular 30th anniversary line. But as we designed these figures, we began to sneak in a few pursuit figures. Hazard Viper, Zombie Viper, in with more faithfully 1980s figures, like Techno Viper and Sci-Fi. So while Pursuit of Cobra itself wasn't existing anymore, they did try to put in those types of figures in the line wherever they could. There are certainly Pursuit era figures and designs in the toy line, just under different names than we'd originally intended. Despite this pressure, Sculpting and I were able to squeeze in several of our original designs, notably the Data Viper. I stated at the beginning of this video that everyone has their entry point into a toy line. And for me, Pursuit of Cobra in 2010 was my entry point into G.I. Joe. It had a lot of unique designs and it had a lot of interesting new ideas that, at the time, I didn't realize were as new as I thought they were. The environment angle really did bring me in. I thought it was such a cool concept to have all these different characters in different places of the Earth, and then later on when I would watch some of those original G.I. Joe 80s cartoons, the environment message was there. This idea of going all around the world for the Pyramid of Darkness or the Weather Dominator, that was already baked into G.I. Joe, so it just made so much sense to bring that fully into a toy line. And of course, this toy line was not perfect. Not every single figure was a knock it out of the park, all time greatest must have figure. No, it did have its faults here and there. And did you happen to notice a sort of missing element to this video? There's something I didn't mention throughout the entire line. That's right, there are no females at all in the entire G.I. Joe Pursuit of Cobra line. Not a single one. Now, we know when this line was supposed to be a sort of continuation of Rise of Cobra, we have sort of unused samples of a Scarlet figure, which Makes sense, she was in the movie, so she would have been in the toy line, but there are no female figures. No Lady J, no Baroness, no Jinx, none of those characters, which is a bit odd, right? G.I. Joe has some iconic female characters, so it's a shame to not have them in this line. However, looking at G.I. Joe now, that has since changed. There is an abundance of female characters, so it's good to know. While then, it didn't really work out. Maybe it's that old adage of female figures don't sell to boys, but for now, we've changed that for the better. When I had asked John Warden about his final thoughts on the line, this is what he had to say. I'm so happy that the legacy of the Pursuit of Cobra today lives on in the hearts of collectors, and even in the collections of some new G.I. Joe fans. There were kids during the toy line's original launch who were young adults today in 2024. We succeeded in our mission, to create a distinctive era of the Joeverse that stands out over a decade after its inception. This video is brought to you in part by Hobby Link Japan. If you're a fan of things like Super Sentai or just Japanese media in general, 
why don't you check out Hobby Link Japan? They've got figures, statues, and a whole horde of different kind of collectibles. Click the link down in the description below to check out Hobby Link Japan today. Thank you guys so much for checking out my video about G.I. Joe, The Pursuit of Cobra. As I stated many times in this video, this line holds a very dear place to my heart. You know, being my entry into the G.I. Joe toy world is a pretty important one considering my enjoyment of G.I. Joe today. I want to give a very, very big thank you to John Warden for answering some of my questions, and he gave me a lot more than what you've seen in the video, so I'm going to do my best to get these sort of answers out there for you guys. Maybe I'll try to do it in a Google Doc, who knows, but I will put further information of that down in the description so you guys can check that out in the future. I also want to give a very big shout out to GeneralJoesReborn.com, they will also be linked down in the description. Please check them out, they are a wonderful resource if you're looking for a bunch of G.I. Joe information and reviews and photos and all of that. So once again, General Joe's Reborn is definitely the site you want to check out. And finally, I want to give a thank you to Kirk Beatty, my partner in crime, my podcast co-host, my good friend, for providing the voice that you heard today as John Warden. In case you were unaware, John Warden is not an Australian man, that guy was actually my good friend, so I thank him for his performance in this video. Feel free to check out his stuff, I will link his channel down below, and check out our podcast, The Grund, wherever you can find podcasts, aka Apple Podcasts and Spotify. But that's really it for this video. Let me guys know what you guys think of the video down below. Let me know what you think of G.I. Joe Pursuit of Cobra. Should they do more stuff like this, more themed stuff? I think it could be cool. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and I thank you all for sticking around for Yojo June. It has been a lot of fun, and I'm glad you guys seem to be enjoying it. So I guess that is pretty much it. Thank you guys. Take care.